I enjoyed going through my stuff uh, while isolating last year, but it was nothing compared to March 2020. In March 2020, I returned to Nostalgia HQ, my parents' house in Wiltshire. My parents' house, brackets, nicer than my house, brackets, might be mine eventually, brackets, TBC. <laughs> A lot of variables still in play. Brother and sister yet to really show their hand long term. <laughs> I was lucky that I was able to go and spend the first lockdown at my parents' house. Uh, I was even luckier that my parents weren't there. They were trapped on the other side of the world by the pandemic. I love my parents very dearly, but there's no better combination at any age or stage of your life than parents' house without parents there. <laughs> All of the aga, none of the aggro. Let's keep it simple. <laughs> I spent five months uh, during the lockdown at my parents' house. Five months sleeping in my childhood bedroom. Five months, the longest period I've spent in that bedroom since my parents sent me away to an all-boys boarding school when I was seven years old in 1998. I don't blame them. It was a good decision. I was a little shit. I was asking too many questions. <laughs> questions no parents are prepared to answer. How are babies made? What happens after we die? Why does Home Alone 3 have a different child? Too many questions. <laughs> Let somebody else explain Macaulay's problems to the boy. <laughs> I wrote a lot of short stories at boarding school in the late 1990s, and of course, I brought a few of them with me tonight. They paint quite the portrait of my mental state at the time. <laughs> there are three unifying themes to these stories. Number one, a strong undercurrent of loneliness. Number two, a transparently autobiographical main character with my name changed to someone from the Thomas the Tank Engine franchise. <laughs> Number three, the stories almost immediately pivot away from their originally stated or requested aim to be about whatever was happening in the real world of football at the time. <laughs> so we start by way of example with a windy night, 1998. Gordon was asleep in his bed. <laughs> and he heard a thunderstorm outside. The wind was loud, and the rain rattled against the windows. He felt so alone, and he missed his mummy and daddy. But then he had a great idea. He could watch Match of the Day. So he went downstairs and turned on the TV. There were no pundits because of Des Lynam's views on the Good Friday Agreement. Even now, when we're filming this, let alone at whatever point in the future people may watch it, we're already quite far past the sell-by date for the uh, <laughs> Des Lynam's views on the Good Friday Agreement. But once you've written that, that stays in the show till the end of the tour. <laughs> it was 1-1 in Man U v Newcastle. Man U couldn't lose if they wanted to win the league. With one minute left, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer tackled Rob Lee to stop him scoring. He didn't get the ball and he got sent off, but it was just what he had to do and the match ended as a draw. Just then, there was a flash of lightning outside and the TV went off, so Gordon went back to bed and fell asleep. The end. <laughs> and you can't help but sympathise with my teacher who's written underneath, Ivo, this is not about a windy night. 